All right, welcome to Return to Learn, launching instruction for health and physical education. My name is Shannon Klassen, and I'm the Director of Health and PE here at the Oklahoma State Department of Education. Here is my contact information if you need to get a hold of me with questions, comments, or any concerns. All right, so right now we're going to do a quick temperature check. And so the directions are you will have 10 seconds to choose which of the two options you like more. All right, so according to the cartoon that you chose is the icebreaker activity that you're going to choose. So if you chose Scooby-Doo, you are going to do the jam board that is located at this bit.ly address, or you can get your phone or iPad and scan this QR code to get to that Jamboard and follow those directions. If you chose The Simpsons, you can do the Minty Meter at um, www.minty.com and use this code to access the Minty Meter. You can also access the Minty Meter with that QR code as well. So I will give you about two minutes to do that icebreaker and give me a little bit of information on how you're feeling about the upcoming school year. Give you a little more time to fill out that Jamboard and Minty Mater. Michelle will be helping me today, and so she will be posting links in the chat box. Michelle, if you'd like to enter the, the Jamboard and Minty Mater into the chat box, that would be great. All right, we're going to go ahead and move on. So talking about session goal, or the goal today is to develop an understanding of how to support social and emotional learning, safety considerations, and effective instruction while providing virtual or in-person instruction while social distancing. All right, so talking about social and emotional learning. Um, as you know, um, our students and family um, have been impacted greatly over um, the last five months with co the COVID situation, um, among other things in, in society. And so um, as physical education teachers and health teachers, we can address those social and emotional learning uh, competencies through that movement lens, which can sometimes be less intimidating to some students. And so CASEL has a um, social and emotional core competencies that you can check out um, later um, as well. Um, that will give you more in-depth information. There is also a SEL and physical education connection that's evident in the crosswalk that Shape America has developed um, and that the grade level outcomes and standards for K through 12 physical education and CASEL's um, SEL core competencies. So um, we're going to check out some of the social and emotional learning resources that Shape America has right now. So Health Moves Minds, these are free um, lessons that are on Shape America's website, um, Power Through Empowerment. These particular um, lesson plans that are on the website are for grades six through eight. Um, and so it's talking about analyzing influences and you. And so there are, I believe, three to four lessons with that that are free on, on the Shape America website. All right, so some considerations and resources as you plan for the school year. Um, you may ask yourself, how can I plan for students 
um, or help students identify their feelings and teach them self-regulation uh, tools um, to handle some of that stress and anxiety and even trauma that they may have um, endured over the last five months. And you may also ask yourself, how um, can you build a classroom community and increase that social connectedness through engaging activities? So as you can see, CASEL has more resources here that you'll um, be able to access after the presentation today. So right now we're going to do a little um, activity that kind of demonstrates how you can uh, connect with your students, even get to know them a bit through a virtual setting. And so what I'd like you to do right where you are is to stand up and we're going to do a little activity called That's Me. This um, activity is modified from an activity that I um, saw a few years ago at a Shape America conference um, by Chip Candy. So what we're going to do is you're standing up and I want you to put your arms out like a letter T and do arm circles for me. Awesome, put your hands down. Now I want you to march in your spot. Perfect. Now today, when you march in your spot, that means your answer is yes. If you're going to do arm circles, that means your answer is no. So I'm going to be asking questions, kind of a get to know you activity, then you're going to demonstrate that how you're feeling or how you um, are answering by your, your body movements. All right, so the first question for you all is, are you addicted to your phone? So I should see marching or arm circles. Now the next question, do you like to dance? The next question is, are you an out of the box thinker? Next question, do you have a good attitude? That would be kind of interesting to see how middle schoolers would answer that, that question. The next question is, are you a hard worker? Now those last three questions, are if you answered yes to them, all three, that will serve you well in this upcoming school year. That's definitely for sure. Now, if you were doing this activity with uh, younger students, I would play like we just played where students did um, movement to yes and no questions. Um, if you were doing it with older friends, you could make, uh, do it a, a bit, um, add a little more complexity to it, um, where you have them rank how they're feeling on a scale to one to 10, and whatever exercise they're answering, if they ha feel like, you know, very strongly that they are outgoing, they would have to do 10 squats. Or if they felt very strongly that they were um, not shy, um, then they would do um, maybe 10 of the other type of exercise that you ask. So just some fun ways to incorporate um, movement into a synchronous um, virtual learning situation. All right, so the next area that we're going to discuss is safety considerations. This is a big one for physical education and health teachers. So we need to first of all talk about where are we going to be teaching this coming year. So possibilities um, that you could be teaching in the gymnasium. Um, some of you may be teaching outside and some of you may be teaching in a classroom. So those are the safety considerations that we're going to be talking about for today. So if you are in the gymnasium, you need to keep in mind that more space for instruction may be required for PE due to that increased respiration. Um, currently, there is um, some research going on to kind of to find out um, the, the distance of that increased respiration and that how it travels. Um, so we'll be um, updating you through the newsletter if, uh, when, if and when we get that information. Um, classes should not be combined and classes should not be increased um, because uh, it, more students, obviously it's going to be more difficult to social distance. Um, we need to match the instructional design to the space. So think about using squad spots, um, floor tape and markers, uh, maybe even station work. 
um, to divide up the students into small areas and or smaller areas to ensure that six foot of separation. Um, think about using signs and or floor markings to um, help with traffic patterns and maybe ent entry and or exit procedures. So in this lower left or right hand corner, you can see that I have added some arrows to um, the display. And so let's say for instance that your class comes to you in alphabetical order. The students are lined up in alphabetical order, order or some teachers have them in number order. So the first row, the first alphabet, alphabetically, they would come into the classroom and that first person would lead them down the first row to their spots. The first 12 students would be in the first row and so on. And when they leave, then they would leave in reverse order and the fourth row would lead out, followed by third, then the second, and first. So just kind of think about those traffic patterns so that we are not, um, where we can still ensure that social distancing. We also need to think about here is pathways to go to the bathroom or and or to um, the water fountain or uh, in most cases some um, school districts won't allow water fountains. So think about procedures for water, water bottles and how to keep those separate as well. All right, so some more considerations for the gymnasium. Um, set up those expectations and procedures for entry, exit, bathroom, and water breaks. Um, turning to lessons, um, lessons should not include um, no contact activities and we should limit or have no um, equipment. Now that's, that's pretty um, challenging in a physical education class to have limited or no equipment. So we are going to think about some ways that we can address that. So you could provide students with their own equipment for class and prohibit sharing of equipment. Think about um, using disposable objects um, instead of using a beanbag, perhaps use something that is in school readily, like a um, paper. So you could ball that paper up and use that instead of a beanbag. You could also create uh, PE kits, individually labeled bags that students could use at home or at school. And then it ha I have some items that you could include like jump ropes, bean bags, scarves, cup stacking, um, a, a ball that would bounce. You could do uh, many activities with um, a playground ball, um, a beach ball and or a Frisbee. Now, um, Michelle is going to add into the chat box um, a blog about ESSER plans, or, I'm sorry, ESSER funds. And ESSER funds stand for Elementary and Secondary um, Schools Emergency Relief Funds. So talk to your administrators after you read that blog post and see if there are ESSER plans or funds for um, the creation of those PE kits. All right, now also think about uh, making a contingency plan if students don't have, don't bring a kit or if that equipment somehow gets contaminated, contaminated during class. All right, moving on to the outside, um, safety considerations. Um, all of the information that we are getting says is really promoting physical education um, and instruction being delivered outdoors um, because it, of the environmental um, benefits from being outside and with the spread of COVID. So weather permitting, um, PE instruction can be delivered outside and ex, you know, assess your play areas, um, see the areas that will be most beneficial for you to use, and then also communicate that plan to your administrators um, so they, they know where you will be at all times. M mark the field, paint spots on the blacktop. Those are ways that you could maybe uh, make sure that stu students keep their space. Again, on the outside, when teaching outside, you'll have to establish that entry, that exit, and bathroom, even water break procedures. Um, think about teaching lifetime activities like geocaching, tennis, 
Um, biking may be difficult, obviously, um, but um, outdoor activities, outdoor education that may take um, less equipment and where folks can keep their social distancing. Also think about um, avoiding using uh, playground equipment um, unless you are able to clean and disinfect those areas following um, a class playing on it. All right, so, sorry. We're going to go ahead and move into safety considerations um, with distance learning. So safety considerations are paramount. Um, we have to plan for anything that can go wrong because when students are home alone, um, we don't want anything um, happening to them um, when they're trying to participate in our, our instruction or our, our class. So make sure to document safety considerations about student material uh, or their equipment in the student materials in the guidance and even in your lesson plan. Uh, make sure that you are being cautious when you ask students to use alternative materials because obviously um, equipment may be a challenge um, in, in providing that equity for our students. So instead of um, offering a suggestion of using plastic shopping bags for juggling, maybe use something like a tissue paper or even um, a paper towel, something that wouldn't um, be a suffocation hazard. All right, so right now we're going to talk about procedures and protocols. The first pr uh, protocol is about face mask. They should be worn, they're encouraged, um, or most schools um, that I've heard of from, they are requiring their staff to wear masks. Um, and then some schools have students where it is optional, or some are even requiring students to wear those masks as well. And it, it's really important to do that uh, when social distancing is dis difficult. Um, think about um, consulting either a school nurse or your, your, t your school's response team um, about wearing face mask when participating in vigorous um, physical activity and especially with students who have underlying conditions. With those masks, um, we need to avoid heavy cardio activities for obvious reasons. Um, if, a, if you are teaching in, within a classroom um, and providing that PE instruction, it can happen in a, a PE can happen in a classroom. It just needs to be, the room needs to be well ventilated and still allow for students to be six foot apart. Um, it is also recommended to eliminate um, the use of locker rooms or weight rooms um, just for um, small spaces that don't have well, uh, good ventilation is not ended. Also students to, um, should wear appropriate clothes to PE instead of using the locker rooms to change clothes. All right, so cleaning um, procedures frequently wipe down high touch areas um, or shared items. Uh, the CDC has guidance on how uh, physical education equipment should be disinfected. Um, also encourage you know, individual water bottles and or clean those water fountains frequently. Um, we can, should avoid sharing items um, like we talked about, um, foam balls, cloth bean bags, instead using vinyl or plastic materials that are going to be easier to clean. So the instructional focus and pacing is where we're going to be moving next. Um, so you may be thinking, where do I start um, with my, my curriculum? Um, where, what lessons do I go over first? A lot of school districts are um, do, having a focus on social and emotional learning at the first of school. Some schools are focusing on recess activities so that students know what to do um, when they go out for recess because obviously that's going to look different um, compared to a typical year. Um, but you can also, once you move past those, um, those first months 
of school, um, you need to start planning to address all of the Oklahoma academic standards for physical education. So how we do that is just assess your curriculum. What do you use now? And what are some of those lessons that you can convert into either online um, activities and or um, the, the lessons that are organized in a way that you can um, support social di distancing in the gym. All right, so when we talk about um, effective instructional routines, we're talking about a, a five component, five components of your lesson. And so one of the first components of the lesson is discussing the importance of the skill and its relevance and the relationship to other skills learned. So one way that you could do this, whether it be in physical education or health class, is using the what, why, and how concept. So if we look right here, this is a website by Joey Afif, and his um, what, what, why, and how. Um, what are we learning today? Well, that's going to be our lesson's objective. Um, why are we learning it? Um, most of the time when students know why we're doing something, it helps make it more rel uh, relevant to them and their life. And then you're going to let them know how they're going to know they have learned it. So how will they know that they are successful in, in, their, um, in the lesson today? Second of all, where you can, the second component would be to present the steps for developing a skill. And so um, you could use the OPENS skill cue teach sheets or the essential elements of motor skill guidance document that I have here. So this is a document that goes through all of the skills in standard one and breaks, it, breaks each skill down into cues so that you can teach your students. And then what you're looking for, the essential elements. And that all, those essential elements also help you explain what um, you're looking for and how they're going to, how your students are going to accomplish it. For health class, um, if you check out the RMC Health Education, they provide um, step posters and sub-skill posters and teaching pro progressions that will help with many of the skills that you work on in health class. The next skill, oops, actually, there it is. The third component of a, an effective instructional routine is to model the skill. So in person, that's pretty easy to do. You model the skill, um, hopefully, in most units and, and for most skills. So in virtual or even blended learning, think about creating or using videos. Um, if your students do not have um, technology or they are, they are limited with technology, then you could provide sequential pictures uh, that would model and break down that skill and provide an, an example for your students. Also for health class, there, here is an example in, within that um, Shape America's um, Health Moves Minds. There is in activity one, an example of modeling the skill. All right, so what I would like you to do right now where you are, because I've been talking a lot and I want you to move a little bit. So I want you to grab something that is around you, something that is tossable, soft, maybe it's a piece of paper, um, maybe it is just um, just something that you have lying around. I have a piece of, or actually a roll of tape. So I'm just going to show you how this might work in practicing the skill with component number four. So once you have modeled the skill, it is time for students to practice the skill. So I'm going to click on the skill application or, and or uh, the self-guided challenges. So this would be really great for students who don't have technology. You could just print the hard copy and send it home. Or if you are using a blended learning or virtual learning, you could link it to your 
um, your whatever learning platform you're using, maybe Canvas or Google Classroom. So what I need you to do with that object that you just picked up, I want you to go ahead and follow this at home catch quest. So take that ball, that rolled up sock, a stuffed animal or tape or maybe a piece of paper and I want you to follow along step one. So catch that object with both hands and you're going to do that for five throws and catches. Then you're going to place that object in your right hand and toss and catch and switch. We got to move since we're PE teachers, right? Now, if you notice, there is challenges one through, through nine, and each are done five times. So if you notice, I'll scroll, scroll down, there are challenges for kindergarten first and second and third, fourth and fifth, sixth and seventh. This, this is made by Mike Ginicola. And so this is just a, a, an example of a way you can incorporate some of that practice time when your students are at home um, in that blended model or maybe even virtual model. All right, so the last, the fifth component is provide feedback and that reinforcement to your students. That's going to be where your students, how they're going to master those skills that you've modeled and now that they've practiced, give them feedback on areas they need to improve or uh, what they're doing correctly. So you can incorporate QR codes, Flipgrid, the Jamboard that you used earlier this, um, in this presentation, Ed Puzzle and water, I'm sorry, um, paper and pencil assessment. <coughs> now right here for health, there is an assessment toolkit that is very, very useful to um, health, he health educators. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so I want you all to experience a digital learning um, or have a digital learning experience based on those five components that we just discussed. So right now, um, Michelle Camacho, my um, colleague at OSDE, she's going to put in a link in the text chat box with the Bitmoji exploration. And so I want you to just kind of explore it and see, check out the warm up, check out the skill, the activity, the cool down and the, the wrap up. Pay special attention to that there are modifi modifications in the activity. Um, pay attention that there's also a mindfulness component to kind of address that SEL um, that we talked about earlier in this presentation. There's also a warm up. Every good, uh, lesson should include a warm up and a cool down. And then also um, this, these skills will provide the cues to help your students with that practicing component of a, a quality lesson. Michelle, do you have the link in for folks so they can kind of explore the Bitmoji class, classroom? Yes, Shana, I do. Um, and you do have one question that you might want to address um, okay. about um, if there is free health curriculum available. That is a really good question. Um, a comprehensive health um, curriculum is, I do not know of one that is complete. And one of the reasons that is, is because um, skills-based health, um, we want you to build it out according to your community. And so if you will go to that RMC Health Education, website. They have many tools and resources to help you build that curriculum out. So for instance, if you lived in, um, let's say, California, the, the um, health topics may not be the same in California that they would be in Oklahoma. So what we would ask you to do is um, utilize the YRBS it's called the Youth Behaviors Risk Survey that the CDC does every year. And so what you would do 
you could go to the Oklahoma State Department of Health um, website to find the Oklahoma YRBS information and look at that data to drive your instruction. And so uh, we want to address the topics that are pertinent and relevant to Oklahomans and uh, the students in Oklahoma. So if you look at analyzing influences, they have um, resources for K through two all the way up to 12. And so it breaks down um, the skills and the steps of the skills and how to teach progression um, for analyzing influences by grade. So it isn't a comprehensive health curriculum, but this resource will help you build a curriculum that will be relevant to your, your students and the, the topics and the, the um, challenges they face regarding health, if that makes sense. Michelle, did, did uh, they have any comments about that resource? About the Bitmoji? Yes, and or um, the health resource. No, no comments on either one. Okay. Um, if you have any questions about the Bitmoji, um, go ahead and, and add that to the chat. Now, some people may not um, be into Bitmoji. You could just simply take away the Bitmoji and have the elements, the five components within um, a learning, uh, digital learning experience. So you could just organize it in the same way and just eliminate the Bitmoji. Um, if you would like this template, um, Michelle, you can add the Bitmoji template link into the chat box at this time. And then you can just use that template to um, change the, the skill, the warm up, um, etc. All right, we're going to go ahead and move on and discuss the blended and learning distance learning considerations. So when you are planning for um, blended and distance learning, think about establishing that two way communication with parents and families right away. Um, and one way that you can do that is use a digital uh, platform consistently to increase that, that student engagement. If you're only using it every once in a while, students are less likely to um, be engaged or um, maybe even holding them accountable. Um, create some normalcy um, to the blended learning or distance learning um, uh, atmosphere. Um, I guess it could be also the environment by establishing routines. Um, with blended learning, Think about making the independent work, um, practicing the skills that you have already taught. Um, also think about learning different mediums. So maybe learning how to make demonstration videos and screen recordings, even flipped um, lessons. And the guidance that you will be receiving at the end of this session, it will have um, links to each of those different types of um, mediums. Um, one thing I would like to call out, um, if you are interested in learning more about digital tools and um, even how to vet digital tools, is you can go right here to Return to Learn, Launching Instruction with Digital Tools. Um, Karen Leonard, the Director of EdTech, she worked on this um, and it's a great resource for teachers and or school districts to um, guide them through um, digital tools. So Michelle, if you'd like to drop that in the chat box, that link for um, digital tools, that would be great. All right, so the next thing we're going to be talking about is blended and distance learning resources. Um, some of you may know that Op Open PE um, has created a PE Now for instructional materials. Um, they just added that last week and they have three weeks of lessons for K through 12th grade that support physical education teachers that could be, the lessons could be used for in-person while social distance, 
distancing and or online instruction, depending on what you are, what situation you are in. It includes things like activity logs, choice boards, menu boards, um, checklists, assessments, it even has teacher scripts and um, station activity cards. So I would really encourage you to check that out since it is free. All it, that, all it really requires is you to register online. Um, the next resource I'd like to tell you about is the online physical education guidance from Shape America. That document provides learning activities as well as assessment ideas. All right, so talking about uh, physical education requirement, um, as you know, the state law um, requires uh, kindergarten through fifth grade to receive 60 minutes of phys physical education each week with an additional 60 minutes of physical activity. With distance or even blended learning, um, that may look, the physical activity and physical education may look and feel different than um, typical years, but um, we should also think about capitalizing on and getting input from uh, the, your school's Healthy and Fit Advisory Committee and kind of capitalizing on their uh, expertise on how to reach those physical um, activity and physical education requirements. So my suggestion in meeting physical education requirements when it, you're in person um, is to I obviously teach in the gymnasium outside or in the classroom with those protocols for social distancing. Um, this Rep It Out is a great resource. Um, it has um, K through eight activities that promote social distancing. Uh, another um, resource for online environments. Um, you can use video recordings, uh, activity logs, heart rate monitors, pedometers, or some sort of activity trackers to either demonstrate skill development and or verify participation in physical activity. Open does also have those physical um, activity logs um, that tr can help teachers track physical activity for their class and or outside of, phys or outside of your class. Um, let's talk about meeting that physical activity requirement. Um, physical education teachers could provide health education online or in person. Um, the classroom teachers can utilize those brain breaks. Hopefully they're doing that in, in a typical year and that can translate into the online or in-person instruction using those social distancing protocols. Um, recess can be safe. And so um, recess games for social distancing, I have some uh, examples here we'll, we'll quickly look at. How are we doing on time? Um, considerations for social distancing, you can read through those. And then there's also um, several games that have been modified for social distancing. So when you get this resource, you can look through that. Um, this one is called Rock, Paper, Scissors, Hopscotch. Um, I found that on Open PE Recess resources. And then just added a, a, a component to um, ensure that social distancing with a top spot here. So um, we can check that out later after this, after this um, presentation. So we really need to think about teacher self-care. Um, when we're not taking care of ourselves, we don't have anything to give to our students. And we know that they'll be coming to us needing us to be our strongest and our best. And so um, really just kind of think about taking care of those physical needs for yourself, sleep and exercise and good nutrition, um, creating those, those routines that help you um, stay stress-free in a stressful time. Um, create a, a good sense of balance between work and life and, you know, find some activities or hobbies that you can do while you're social distancing. 
And the last one is stay connected to your friends and your family. I think um, one of the things we have to also think about as physical education teachers is lean into um, your state organizations and the opportunities you have to connect with one another because that you're building a support system and that network is going to be really helpful as we learn and kind of move through this year. Um, you know, some of the challenges that we face may be a trial and error kind of situation. We try something, if it doesn't work, we tweak it just like any good lesson. You know, I always felt bad for the students who um, I would present to that first time because you know, it didn't always go as smoothly as I had envisioned and I just kept tweaking it until um, by maybe the second or third class, it was a lesson that I was, I could be happy with. So I feel like that's maybe how this, this year and um, is going to move is we just keep tweaking until it works. So, um, you know, find friends that are in the profession who can provide that support to you and you know you can brainstorm with and and talk about those challenges so that you can feel that you are um, being successful in your in your teaching um, ongoing support the Oklahoma State Department of Education will continue to have monthly meetings like I have through the summer and they will occur on the second Tuesday of each month um, from 3.30 to 4.30. So hopefully that um, allows most teachers to attend. If you, um, uh, for more information on those, those meetings and any professional development opportunities, that will be uh, communicated through uh, my newsletter. So um, <clears throat> if you haven't signed up for that, make sure that you are, and that will be also in the guidance that we present to you at the end. All right, the set, next thing that we need to talk about is another opportunity um, for ongoing support for instruction this year. Um, OSDE has received a CDC grant to support schools regarding um, CDC COVID school-based guidance as it relates to physical education, physical activity, nutrition, um, school-based health services, and then that social and emotional um, learning slash climate. And so um, the, through this grant, we will be um, delivering resources and webinars that will be available on the OSD website. Um, that will be on the Safe and Healthy Schools website. There will be a link to the COVID um, grant resource page. Um, we are also part of this grant, we'll be um, developing a physical education cadre um, that will have 20 members and we will also be developing a school nurse cadre that will um, and those cadre members will be chosen through an application process that the application should be going out within the next two weeks and um, we, I encourage you know those folks who feel like they would like to be a part of that cadre um, to fill out that application and it will go through um, the newsletter um, or Dot, uh, govery, uh, gov, uh, no, gov delivery, there you go. Um, the same program that the newsletter goes out in. Uh, those cadre members will have uh, trainings, they'll have meetings, and they will be um, building communities of practice in assigned regions of Oklahoma to provide, again, that ongoing support in developing those networks with other physical education teachers. All right, so real quick, we're going to do a professional development topic survey. And to access that survey, you can go to this bit.ly link right here, or you can scan that QR code, and it should take you right to the survey. And this survey will help me and uh, the team that I will be working with this year to develop professional development opportunities and we want that information and that data from you so that we are giving you the uh, help and the support that you need. And um, so please make sure that you fill out this survey so we can gain some of that insight into what it is you're needing and how we can better support you. Michelle, could you um, post the survey link in for the professional development topic survey? Into the yes, it is, it is posted. 
Thank you. Do we have any other questions at this time? I do not have any other questions in the chat box at this time. All right, this return to learn guidance um, that is titled Launching Instruction for Health and, in um, Health and Physical Education, you can access that guidance at this bit.ly address. After you're finished done, uh, with your, with your uh, survey, you can access it. It is also on the um, Safe and Healthy Schools website. I loaded that earlier today. So it should be up and ready or at this bit.ly address. Again, this is my contact information. Shana Klassen, Director of Health and PE at the Oklahoma State Department of Education. If you have questions, comments, concerns with any of the information that is provided to you in the guidance, please reach out to me. I'm always here for you. Um, if you have um, topics that you would like to have addressed um, but it wasn't on the survey. You can also reach out to me for that information with that information as well. All right, at this time, I'm going to go ahead and stop my screen share. There's two of them. And we'll open it up um, for questions, discussion, comments, concerns, things that you would like to talk with other people on the line about. If you just joined us, um, we have, uh, Michelle, could you put the um, survey link and the guidance link in the chat box again? since they won't have access to the, the links that they were added prior to them joining. So those folks who just joined, Michelle's adding a survey link. We'd like to get that information from you so we know how to build out the resources for this year. And then also the guidance document, Return to Learn, Launching Instruction for Health and PE. So you have that document to go through and use as a resource. So Sarah, tell me um, what does physical education look like in, in Stillwater this year? Well, at this moment, as of today, <laughs> 